like the way I dance? Oh, it's fine. It's just fine. Jim, my turn now. Hello and welcome to Cinecrisis. When I think back on some of the movies that made a real impact on me the first time I saw them, one that immediately comes to mind is X, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes. Released in 1963, this film produced and directed by Roger Corman, the king of exploitation cinema, is a real overlooked gem. Ray Millan plays Dr. James Xavier, a scientist obsessed with transcending the boundaries of the visual and electromagnetic spectrum. In doing so, he creates a special eye drop that allows the user to gain X-ray vision. As he becomes more and more obsessed by his newfound powers after taking the drug, Xavier begins to lose his grip on reality. A far cry from his heyday as an Academy Award winner for Billy Wilder's The Lost Weekend, Ray Milan had a second leg to his career in the 1960s, experimenting with exploitation films such as The Premature Burial and Panic in Year Zero. And despite being near fuddy-duddy levels of square, he along with contemporaries like Vincent Price, Boris Karloff, and Peter Lorre managed to find themselves in the hippest movies of the day, appealing to a young audience they probably never dreamed of reaching. But kidding aside, Ray Milland is by far one of my all-time favorite actors, a close second to my number one favorite, Vincent Price, both of who possess the two most memorable and delicious voices in all of movie history. These are actors you could literally have reading the dictionary or the phone book, and I would love it. Perhaps best remembered today for his role as a husband who hires a hitman to kill his wife in Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, my personal favorite Milan role is from the screwball comedy The Major and the Minor, where he plays a bumbling but innocent army major who picks up an on-the-run Ginger Rogers disguised as a child. But getting back to X, and by the way, that is the actual title of the movie based on the opening credits. The subtitle, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes, is only featured on the poster and marketing materials. For 1963, this is a movie ahead of its time. As a side note, as Dr. James Xavier, Milan premiered one month after Dr. Charles Xavier of Marvel Comics' X-Men fame, but long after Lionel Atwell's infamous turn as Dr. Jerry Xavier in 1932's Dr. X. Regarding the plot, director Roger Corman has claimed that his original idea for the film didn't involve a scientist at all. Instead, the movie was to be about a jazz musician who gained x-ray vision after consuming too many drugs, but after he wrote himself into a corner with this premise, changed it to the more conventional approach. As the movie deals with vision and eyes thematically, it also has a healthy fixation on visual motifs of the human eye, both with extreme close-up shots of characters' eyes, but also perhaps one of my favorite opening shots in a movie. A disembodied eye staring at the camera for an extended period of time, followed by said eye floating and dancing in a jar filled with formaldehyde. What a way to start a movie. X follows a pretty standard sci-fi, 50s-style mad scientist story for its first half as we follow Dr. Xavier and his experiments to pursue the invisible spectrum, which is all fine and good. Two scenes stand out in particular during this part of the movie. No doubt the first will be one of the movie's most infamous scenes where Xavier realizes the lasting and uncontrollable aspect of his power at a swinging 60s dance party, where he visualizes all the young partygoers, especially the ladies, buck naked. And check out these hip dance moves from the land. Second, the surgery scene is perhaps more emblematic of where the movie ultimately ends up thematically. Asked to participate in a cardiac surgery, Xavier vehemently disagrees with the attending surgeon's diagnosis and technique due to his ability to see inside the patient's body and directly visualize her pathology. With all of his sheer hubris, Xavier commandeers the operating room, so much as even slicing the opposing surgeon's hand to prevent him from proceeding, and this is where we see Xavier in all his glory, for better or for worse. This leads into the second half of the movie, which sheds the conventional mad science angle and more interestingly deals with the ramifications and detrimental effects of Xavier's experimentation on himself. Responsible for the death of his friend and colleague, Xavier goes on the run and ends up as a carnival sideshow performer using his newfound talents to turn a buck while laying low. While there, he naturally clashes with the curious circus folk, distrustful of their new recruit, and also becomes discovered by the greedy ringmaster played in a most unusual straight-up dramatic performance by comedian Don Rickles. And of course, the final scene of X solidifies the movie in the annals of exploitation cinema. After surviving a car crash, a dazed and wounded Xavier finds his way to a rural religious revival where a preacher warns voraciously about the pervasiveness of depravity and sin, asking the congregation to come forward. So naturally, Xavier moves towards the front of the crowd, and when he mentions his eyes, the preacher famously retorts, If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out! 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 It deserves mention that there's an urban legend regarding this ending where a supposed deleted take included the line of dialogue from Xavier, I can still see, after gouging out his eyes, but numerous sources, including Corman himself, deny such claims. 
We've talked a lot about Ray Milan, but the other cast members deserve a mention as well. Diana Vanderbliss plays Dr. Diane Fairfax, Xavier's scientist colleague slash love interest in the movie. Although she didn't make too many other movies, Vanderbliss spent most of her career in television, particularly daytime soaps like Ryan's Hope and Where the Heart Is. Harold J. Stone plays another of Xavier's fellow doctors who meets an unfortunate demise midway through. And finally, John Hoyt plays Dr. Willard Benson, the surgeon who Xavier attacks during surgery. Hoyt may be more recognizable due to his roles in both the original Star Trek pilot episode The Cage as the ship's chief medical officer and in several Twilight Zone episodes, notably Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up. There's also a fun cameo from Corman regular Dick Miller as a surly and nasty audience member during Xavier's carnival show who gets his comeuppance for being a non-believer. X touches on a couple of key themes, but most notably the blurring line between science and religion, which culminates at the film's conclusion. Even very early on, Xavier scoffs at the claim that certain things are only for the gods to see. As well, Xavier, by way of his preternatural abilities, takes on the role of a holy healer and assumes a quasi-religious role in the community. On a technical note, X boasts that the film was produced in Spectorama, a passing fad photographic process that helps create the movie's illusion of X-ray vision by presenting everything as if you're looking at it through a kaleidoscope or a prism, a truly gimmicky idea if there ever was one, and one that certainly did not catch on beyond this film. X, the man with the X-ray eyes, remains a personal favorite of mine. It's the kind of sci-fi exploitation film from this era that gives you all the right feelings of camp and fun while also delivering some serious dramatic moments that manage to transcend its B-movie sensibilities. Bolstered by the lead performance of Ray Milland and a superb cast of supporting players, including an early appearance by Don Rickles in film, the movie is definitely worth a look back. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time.